Galerkian residual method is used to solve structural problems in solid mechanics, in fluid mechanics, heat transfer and mass transfer problems. In any residual method, the integral of weighted residuals is zero over the solution domain. We have this expression in our previous lecture uh, of uh, weighted residual methods in which we have defined the R function which was residual function or error function and if we integrate it uh, in, integrate it over the whole solution domain its integral will be equal to zero so specifically in the Glerkin's method the shape functions are chosen to play the role of the weighing function that means we replace W by and eyes so what are the shape functions we will discuss is uh, we'll discuss it uh, later in this lecture uh, we have uh, this bar element which is under uh, tensile forces and it has two nodes one and two according to the Hooke's law Sigma X is equal to E epsilon and strain is equal to change in uh, length divided by the original length so delta u is change in displacement and delta x is the original length so we know that the force acting on this bar is constant which is equal to stress into area so this uh, Hooke's law can be written in this form that stress is replaced by force divided by area and this epsilon is replaced by delta u over delta x differentiating this expression with respect to x we obtain the differential equation so this equation differential equation uh, gives us the uh, uh, axial displacement this differential equation is in the form of axial displacement so with the help of this uh, equation we may find the uh, displacement at, at at any point of this bar element so apply we will apply the Glerkin's method to this differential equation and according to Glerkin's criteria we have this equation um, and this integral so uh, we will uh, solve this integral so we uh, replace the this residual function r with this differential equation in this uh, you can see in this equation that we have replaced r with this differential equation so we have this differential equ equation now we will apply integration by parts to this equation to uh, for, for further solution uh, and we know that integration by parts uh, this integral is equal to uh, u into v minus integral of v de de delta u so if we see in the integration by parts u is taken as u is equal to ni where ni is the shape functions and delta u is equal to delta ni over delta x into x so we have differentiated u delta u and we have multiplied with uh, this with delta x and also divided with delta x then delta v v delta v is uh, the second function uh, we have this differential equation which is equal to delta v and if we integrate this differential and we will get the value of v so we will put these value of u delta u delta v and v into this uh, equation and we will have the equation in this form so we have u 
which is equal to n i we have v which is equal to a e over delta u over delta x we uh, we have uh, placed these two values here and v is a e over a e delta u over delta x a e de delta u over delta x and delta u is equal to delta n i dx over dx so we uh, just put in the values into this equation and now we have this equation and for further solution we uh, we know that u which is the displacement is equal to n matrix into d matrix where n is shape vector matrix and it is equal to n matrix is equal to 1 minus x over l into uh, sorry 1 over 1 minus x over l and the second element is x over l and if we differentiate this u with respect to x we will have the equation in this form where n is as uh, where n is shape vector it has two elements and the first element is n1 this is n1 and the second element is x over l which is n2 so we replace this delta u over delta x uh, with this expression this derivative so we have re uh, replaced delta u over delta x with this uh, derivative and in the next step we will uh, put uh, the n i is equal to n one because we had two nodes of our bar element and uh, we will have two shape functions so we will solve this equation with respect to n1 so <coughs> we know that n1 this is n1 is equal to 1 minus x over l so you can see here that delta n over delta x that means we will differentiate this n with respect to x and put its value here so you can see that uh, we have this equation and uh, we will differentiate n1 with respect to x and put its value here after differentiating n with respect to x and placing its value here we have this equation now uh, we will uh, multiply these two matrices and integrate it with respect to x so 1 is 1 over minus 1 over l is multiplied with the and this 1 minus 1 over l it will give us 1 over l square and the integral of 1 is x similarly the second term is obtained so we will integrate it and then we put in the limits 0 to l and we will uh, when we will uh, put in the value l here so 1 l will be cancelled with the l square and 1 l left will be taken out as common so we will have the equation in this form the right so right side of the this equation is equal to f1 x if you see in this figure that t at node 1 is equal to f1 x and t which is the force is equal to ae delta u over delta x so t is equal to f1 x and n value of n1 at 0 is 1 and n value of l n1 at l is 0 it is uh, obtained from here where n1 is equal to 1 minus x over l so after solving this part of the equation gives us the value f1 x so this part of the equation can be written uh, in the form of equation in this way 
the next step we will put the value of n i is equal to n 2 and after putting the value of n 2 and differentiating it with respect to x we see in our previous slide that n 2 is equal to x over l then we will differentiate this n 2 with respect to s x it will give us 1 over l and we will put it uh, here and again multiplying these two matrices and then gives us this expression of f2x we have uh, derived this equation of f1x and these two equations can be written in the form of matrix which is the matrix for bar element equation in which the left side is force matrix the center part is uh, stiffness matrix and the right part of this uh, equation is displacement matrix this is the same equation that we have already derived in our previous lecture by potential energy method and direct stiffness method